right, guys, I'm painting my board red, believe it or not, and I have this wonderful gray color. And this is a middle value gray. And when we're looking at our value scale, you wanna pick something right there in the very middle. That's going to cut the lightness of my pine board. Red doesn't have a lot of pigment, so painting it gray will be helpful um, for cutting the color, not so many coats of red. But when I did this, I discovered some voids that I didn't notice when I was spraying my board or even picking my board out. Um, one of them is a big old long kind of crack. We checked the end and it doesn't go all the way through, but that is a really big, very important thing for you to notice is when you check your board, you wanna lay it down and you wanna eyeball the length of it to see if it bends and twists because those are not attractive. I don't mind knots and I don't mind some voids and stuff, but cracks are something you're not gonna be able to easily recover from. If you ended up with something that you finished painting and it cracks, then you could put a support on the back of the board and put screws in it to keep it together. So that would be a way that you could fix that. But choosing your board wisely before you ever start painting it is really smart. But now I know that I have this crack and I know that I have this void and it's really got kind of a raised area to it. Um, I've given it a little bit of a sand. I could take a palm sander to it and that would help. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it a little bit raised and I'm gonna use this Durham's Rock Hard Water Putty. What I like about this is you can make it any consistency you want because it is a powder. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the powder over here and you can mix as much as you want to. Bring that over here. And then I just got plain water in my water in my ketchup bottle. And you can just put as much water in it as you want. If you add a little bit of vinegar to it, it will retard the drying time. I like the um, ketchup bottle because it just drizzles things out just a little bit. I'm actually gonna try my olive oil in one of those. I hate it when olive oil at home when I'm cooking just pours out. It seems like a nice little drippy, drippy drizzle. Okay, so take that. I've already sprayed my board with the um, Zinzer Bullseye Shellac. Um, that worked like a champ. This thing can be used for like a million, million, million projects. You can use them for dried flowers, paper mache, you can use it on your woodworking, you can use it on all kinds of things. So um, really neat product and we will put an affiliate link below for that. Now we've let that set up just for a minute. And now I'm gonna take this and I'm just going to run it across that hollow. Now because it's such a deep little area, I'm going to need to let that dry um, a good little bit of time. It's water soluble so it won't take long to dry. I'm actually getting ready to go to lunch, so I will let this dry over lunchtime, and then when I get back, I should be able to just get sanding on it. So you scrape away any excess. Fill this void here. And then I'll just inspect the board and fill in anything else that I see. All right, guys, I am back from lunch and we're ready to sand. So we've got our, um, Let's see what our stuff is called. It is our Durham's Rock Hard Water Putty that we mix with our water and we sealed into this crack. We're just gonna give it a sand. Yeah, that makes a nice, lovely. I didn't level it out completely. I'm not that worried about it, but I did make it much more, less an edge or a ledge. And then we'll just sand all these things. And then the color, um, I forget that we're talking about color numbers. The color of the paint that we're using is number 34 um, on our paint chip chart. Um, you can get these on our website, studior12.com. And that is going to tell you exactly what paint and what conversion of the paint that it can be made into. So, and then you'll have a chip that verifies like what the color is. So we will be referencing those from now on. And I'm going to be making the whole board number 18. Um, and that will be the color red and I'll come back to you when I have it sanded and all red. All right, we have three coats of paint over our number 18 color and um, it's nice and dry and it feels nice and smooth too. If it doesn't feel smooth, then you wanna go ahead and give it a little sand. Now we're gonna take our ugly sweater stencil. Do you not love this? It is such a great stencil. 
and we're going to use that in the background kind of like we've done with a buffalo plaid before. So I'm going to line it up with the top of the stencil and then see if I can not evenly space it. Yeah, it looks like it's fitting right between the edge pieces. I'll get that right on top of there and then I'll press down my tape. And we're just going to use really light pressure. So dry brush, dry paper towel and dry off your paint, offload it. And then you'll just go ahead and give it a little tickle. We don't want this to be super strong. I'm going to do just a little bit of it and then we're going to peek. Peeking is always a good technique to use when you are unsure of what you're doing. Um, when your stencil hangs over the edge of something, it'll tend to lift. If it does that, you just want to make sure you give it a little bit of support when you're painting in that area. Okay, you could also tape it down or hold it down. So I'm just going to lift it just a little bit. And once I get out of that area, then I'll move over here and it's nice and flat. When you swirl, um, it just does a really light coat and you just want to make sure you're really dry on your paper towel. Okay, you're ready to peek. Let's take a look. Awesome, that looks so darn cute. I love it. Okay, so we're gonna do that all the way down and just repeat, we'll lift and move our stencil and that's how we're going to get that. Okay, when you are making your pattern go down the board so that you can repeat the pattern, because we're doing it really lightly, it's difficult to see through the mylar. You can see through it, but barely. Um, so you want to not have your trees too far away from your um, pattern because it makes a big void and that will look weird because it's got a lot of busyness to it. So I'm gonna show you a really cool thing that you can do if you mess it up because I have done this twice so far. So I'll get my stencil laid out. I'm using my reindeer butts as a um, leveling mechanism to my board. And so say I get this. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the top row under my trees, oops, hi, on the board, or say if that just happens, and you mess it up. So I come here and oh yeah, that's way too much space going on there, right? So what you can do, that's why you peek. What you can do is you can dampen a paper towel and you can go right over that fresh paint and it will wipe right off. It's such a great benefit to having fresh paint. So you just wipe that off and then give it a blow dry reposition and do it again. All right, so the first thing you wanna do when you get ready to paint with a bunch of different stencils, and I don't have a bunch, I have a couple, um, is you wanna make sure that everything's gonna fit the way you think before you start painting. So I could get this all centered and I could change my mind because it would look differently and that would be unfortunate. So I wanna line my stencil up. We have a little bit of an overlap here, so we'll line our two L's together. And then I just kinda of wanna get it centered on my board and I could take a ruler. I tend to take finger measurements a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, it's approximate and it's gonna be approximate. So if you like to use rulers, use rulers. And then I got this fantastic banding stencil. We have the best banding stencils. Um, we have them in all um, decor styles going back through history. We made a study of it. Um, we've got ugly sweater, we've got, um, classic like caveman, we've got Egyptian, we've got all kinds of really cool pattern and banding stencils. You need to check them out so that you can embellish your work as you go. So I think I wanna make that just a lovely little cuff at the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to replace my O with a wooden snowflake. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and glitter him. I think that's a good idea. And then we're gonna do a really cool trick with the snowflake stencil on top. So I think I'm digging it. I'm gonna go ahead and check the bottom. Yeah, I like that a lot. And then I will start painting. Okay, so tape is your friend. Make sure that you tape in a couple places. I was really struggling with that on the, um, on the, band, on the background stencil because um, the, hang on a second, I can't tape and talk apparently. Um, I was really struggling with that because I taped on the same side. 
So when I taped on the same side, it allowed my stencil to move just a little bit. I really think that you should always tape in two places, but not on the same exact side. That just secures everything a little bit better. So in this case, I'm gonna give this a few extra pieces of tape so it doesn't slide around. And I don't need to do this one yet because this is gonna be the one that tells the story. And actually, I don't need to do this one at all because I have to paint that out. So I have to talk my own way through this. Okay, I'll get that straightened out on the board. I love this background. This ugly sweater pattern is so magic. All right, so we're gonna go in white. We decided that we would use white because um, off-white snowflakes would not look so crisp and wonderful. And I'm going to switch it up just a little bit and we're gonna paint with something different than a dome. So with these jumbo daubers, they are a little spongy, spongy thing that will um, just not absorb a lot of paint. So they're really user-friendly for stenciling. And when we have a really big open hole on our stencil, then it makes it just a little bit more difficult to get even coverage. So I'm gonna dip with my dry dauber. I'm gonna still pounce. I can pounce off on here and just kind of get it evenly loaded. And then I give it a little tappy tap there. And then we just do a little bit of pouncing. Really important that you kind of feather as you go, but it does cover so much faster. So your first coat's almost gonna be like your dusting coat, and then your subsequent coats will be more base coaty coats. If you leave little lines, go back and pick them up and just feather them out. And as we spoke before, always be a peeker and check out if you like what you're seeing, and I do. Lay it back down, retape. I'll get my L done. And what we like about doing light coats is now that I've got this done and this done, let's see if we're dry here. We're dry here so we can get our second coat on. When you do thin coats, that makes it easier to go back and get your second coat done. And it seems as if when you do thin coats, you're gonna use three coats of paint, but you're gonna do three coats if you do thick paint too. So it's actually saves paint, saves drying time, saves blow dryer, saves energy, all the things. So um, might as well just do the thin coat. Okay, I wanna talk about a little panic attack I just had in my head. Um, busy painting on the J. Looked down and caught a bit of the pattern, looked up and saw the deer, and I was like, oh, thank goodness, my deer are upside right. Really easy to paint a background and then just know that it's an all over pattern and then do it upside down. So be really careful to pay attention of if, when you have a background to make sure it's the upside right that you want it to be. So, whew, dodged it on that one. Okay, second coat on our L. Okay, I'm gonna shove this aside. And one of the reasons that I chose this tool is because I think that it will do the best job of basing my snowflake. And so I don't make a ginormous mess on my background here. And put a paper towel down. And this I can do just a little bit heavier, just don't push hard. <clears throat> That'll cover just a little bit faster and better. If you push hard, you'll go over your edges and then you'll have to do cleanup. Nobody likes to clean up. And you can kind of lean your dauber to one side. Let me show you over here on this camera. So if you go straight down, um, that's one way to do it, but it will tend to kind of squish. If you tilt it slightly, it'll stay up on the wood surface. So as you get near the edges, you can tilt it. One more trick, when you are fully loaded, when I've just picked up paint, oh, and I can see I've got a little bit of a ridge of paint going on over here. I'm gonna wipe that off because that can be just a mess. When you first load, go on the big areas of your um, cutout and then that'll push the, the bulk of the paint out and then you'll be kind of 
offload it a little when you get next to your edges. Okay, I am going to do a third coat on my letters and I'm going to finish my other L and my Y and more coats on here and we'll bring you back. All right, so while I was using the Jumbo Dauber and being a little bit irritated that I'm painting white over red, this would be one of those great excuses to bring out my roller. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that because this will definitely save some time. With the roller, you have to treat it just like the Dauber and you have to offload just like the dome brush, just like everything else. And what I do is I open up paper towel and I just kind of push that paint off. And this will make our paint evener. It will base it faster. Um, I don't have to do so much, t -t -t -t, you know, that kind of stuff. And I can even use it over here on my snowflake. So look at how fast that goes. You want to be careful about bleeding under. That's why we roll over here on the paper towel. Ta-da. Whoops. I don't like washing rollers, so I tend not to use them when I think I can. Um, so that is just a personal thing for me. And then when you're rolling over here on your palette, which is a piece of uh, mylar, honestly, um, you can order these scrap pieces. They come in a piece about that long and you can cut them whatever um, length you're comfortable with. I'm comfortable in about a paper size, so I cut them into three. But um, these, so there is a how to wash your um, stencils video that we did. And I show you how to clean a stencil. So you can clean this palette and it's an infinite palette really. So you can just keep using the same piece over and over again and you have zero waste. So you're saving um, with paper plates, you're saving something like nine cents a paper plate. And with palette paper, you're saving like 21 cents, I think a sheet of palette paper. So you do the math, you can save a hundred bucks in a year if you are somebody that paints a lot and I paint a lot. So this is a really good thing. So fast. Okay. I'm going to shove this aside. It's going to need one more coat. And let me show you over here on this little guy. Okay, so the big key here is not to bleed over my edges. So I'll really push off on here. And so I'm going to roll towards my edge and then kind of lift up at the edge. And apply no pressure. And then just kind of kick it up. And I can even tap, tap, tap just a little bit. And turn and repeat. All right, guys. So as your roller starts getting fuller and fuller, you have to spend way more pressure, like really pushing it down over here. I did not push that hard. And I noticed something when I was blow drying, I'm getting a little bit of a scraggly edge, which could almost be called bleeding under. And so I'm going to drip a, actually squirt a couple of drops of water on my palette. I'm going to pick up a couple of drops of water and I'm gonna go over here while the paint is fresh and I can just kind of erase the squiggly lines. Just get them pulled back. And that will fix those. Let's see if I have any I don't like up here. Well, let's just pull this back. Okay, so way up here on the top of here and then a little bit over here. So that's the danger of rollering. So anything I don't like, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little trim. Shave and a haircut, right? Let paint in. Okay. So I am so glad <clears throat> that I got a little bit ahead of myself there and I could show you how to fix that because that is in my humble opinion, that is why you watch videos like this so that you can see how to fix your mistakes. So when you're using a roller, you have to really offload so that you don't make a mess. And another way to handle that would be take your dome brush load some paint offload 
And then you can give yourself just a little edge grooming right there so that it's nice and crisp. So now when I'm in my roller, I won't be as tempted to push on my roller because I'm not worrying about getting all the way to the edges of my paint. And then another trick that I do when I'm doing stencils of any kind is I will start with my roller or my applicator off onto the plastic and pull it into it. If you're shoving towards the edge, you're gonna be tending to push paint under. Okay, and then when I get over here, I'm going to reverse the process. So you don't always just like that. The sound effects are free. Okay, pick up some more paint. Push, 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 and then push, push, push here. And then pay attention to those edges. Sometimes they can glow on paint. Okay, I'm gonna do my third coat on my snowflake with my roller, and then I'm going to use DecoArt's Glamour Dust. Um, such a beautiful glitter. And I'm gonna do it on my little scrap piece of um, mylar because I cannot find my large glitter, glitter tray. <clears throat> and I'm gonna do it as I go. So I'm gonna try to get two of these at once so that my paint will stand. Do three. See, getting greedy is gonna give me heck. All right, and then we're going to go right over here and just pour onto the wet paint. Paint is plastic, and so basically I've got myself a giant bunch of plastic glue on my snowflake. Tap that off, and look at how pretty that is. That is going to be beautiful. All right. I get a little bit of this in my roller, I'm not going to worry. Note that your glitter isn't gonna cover anything up, so you do need to make sure that your paint is completely covering um, so that you won't have ugly base-coated snowflakes. And now to not waste, I think that glamour, um, that glitter costs the same amount as like blood. I think that that's a true statement. So you don't ever want to waste any. That's why I like glitter trays so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sheet. I'm going to give it a little foldy fold. And now I have put most of that right back in there. I can wash this sheet off after I sprinkle it all over the room. And I have wasted hardly any glitter. Next, it's time for our banding. Okay, I love this band stencil. I wanna kind of center it. I can measure that. I can see. Let's go one and a quarter. And I can give it just a little marky poo. Perfect. Okay, and then, actually, I was preempted in that because I'm gonna want, give myself some tape handles. So I should have gone ahead and marked it on the other side because now I need to center my pattern. Okay, so there's my mark. That looks good there. Now I need to verify. That was just a little bit high. One thing about bands, when you're gonna have a band like this, you need to make sure that you're straight because um, it will tattletale on you. And then your uncle Bill will come to the house at Christmas time and he'll see your sign and he'll be like, hey, did you know that thing is crooked? So um, you just wanna make sure that your straight edges are straight. Okay, and because of the thing that we talked about, um, because they tend to, to bow and arch when they drape over the edges. I'm going to tape right next to that edge to give it some more support. Okay. 
Okay. And I feel like I need one more there. I wouldn't run a whole piece of tape on a project. Um, one thing that I don't like to do is I, if you have a lot of taping on your project, then when you peel your tape, depending on what you've done in the background, um, depending on kind of paint you've used, depending on whether or not you've rushed and you didn't do a whole bunch of drying time, your paint can be fresh. You can have paint lift on your background and then you have to start like pretty much all over, especially when you have bands. So you want tape on there a very short period of time and you want your tape um, to be not taped in as many places as possible. Okay, so we're gonna get a dome brush, some white paint, and if your paint is dry, a um, fun little secret about me in the past is um, I would use palette paper and I would paint for three hours. I had a bunch of little kids running around, paint for an hour, two hours, something like that, leave my palette paper, come back the next day and pick up where I was left, where I left off. And I would just put another mound of paint on top of the dried other mound of paint and just keep building that up until I couldn't till I ran out of blending space or whatever. So that's something that you can do too, is just kind of keep building the palette, um, the paint up. Okay, dry paint, dry brush, offloading, and we're gonna do just light swirling. Woohoo, hi, okay. So with something like this, this has got a skinny line, so I'm gonna hold it with some pressure and I'm gonna have to tap it because it's very, very thin. When you get finely detailed stencils that don't have a lot of support, if we put too many lines in this, it would be an ugly stencil and you would hate it. So we wanna do as few bridges as we can, but um, we still want it to be a functional stencil. So I'll just stipple instead of swirling in that area. Okay, remember to be a peeker. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift and peek. Okay, that's looking really good. If you peek, you have a chance to fix. So always make sure you give yourself some time to fix. Okay, one of the secrets to um, managing this band with your second and third coats of stippling, you're gonna be tempted, I was doing it up here and I noticed that I was doing it, um, you're gonna be tempted to push a little bit harder to get inside the little bit of detail. And what that will do is it'll start moving those floppier pieces around. So you wanna use less pressure and more repeats when you have delicate details. It's the way of the stencil world. All right, ready for the reveal. Here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Awesome. <sighs> okay, can I just say, this is why we stencil, is if I wanted to create, recreate this banding with a round brush, I would use um, this fabulous round brush. I would flatten it and I would trace a pattern, I would transfer a pattern, I would load my brush, I would make three lines, I would reload my brush, I would make three lines, and that would be terrible. So this is exactly why these kinds of things in the background is exactly why we use stencils. Okay, I'm gonna get the back, the bottom done, and then we're gonna do a magical thing with a snowflake on the lettering. And then I'll show you how you finish and how you connect it all together. Okay, so my magic trick with a snowflake stencil, you can use any snowflake stencil you already have. Um, any one of them will work, um, but I am going to go right over these letters with the red color to make them look like they are melted through. But to do that, I don't want these lines. Normally, I don't care about the bridging too much, um, but in this case, a straight line running through the middle of my fancy snowflake stencil would be kind of tragic. So we're gonna go with two of our multi-maskers and we are going to mask right next to our letter. 
make them into their own little stencil. And then I am actually going to put a piece of tape so I don't have to think about it across where this crosses over. And I will do all of these three lines. Just stipple them to cover quickly. Blow dry, stipple, blow dry, stipple. I'll be back in a minute. Um, one of the reasons you want to do this is when you, in design world, when you have uh, conflicting lines, your eye is going to want to go to where the conflict is. So you always want to get rid of conflict. So if you have um, light and dark that's too light and too dark, and then you put in something else in the midst of it, and it doesn't line up, then you just want to be careful with conflict. So um, that's why background stencil is so close to the color of the red so that it doesn't conflict with pattern stencil on top. So you always want to watch for areas of conflict when you're doing your projects. Okay, so now I'm going to take the brush and I'm going to erase these lines. Stipple them gone. That's amazing. Um, if you guys are loving this content, make sure you subscribe. Ring the bell if you want to be notified when we have new content. And um, if you already have subscribed, then you're amazing and we appreciate it. And don't forget that you can give us thumbs up and then comment below if there are things that you want to see. Um, and we're happy to answer your questions. We take it so seriously. So thank you so much. Okay. So we made our lines disappear, basically dry. Now I know my J is gonna need some jazz. So I'm gonna lay this over here. And I'm going to take a brush. And of course it's red going over white, so I'm gonna need three coats, so. Knowing is half the battle. Load my red. And I'm not gonna need to worry about going over into my background. I'm gonna do one coat and see if I like this. This is purely experimental. Okay, let's take a little peeky poo. I think I'm gonna like that. All right, blow dryer. Okay, the final reveal. Ta-da. Okay, so what's cool about doing this is you could do this with any of your pattern stencils. We have hundreds and hundreds of pattern stencils. We might even have thousands. Um, we have so many banding stencils, so you can put things together. Um, just go glimmer through the thing. We have a lot of sales. Make sure that you get on our website and subscribe to our newsletter. We give all the tips, the hints, the sales and all of that kind of stuff, that's studior12.com. All right, so we've got snowflakes smeared on our lettering and we're going to have our snowflake in the middle here. And now it reads like a jaw. Um, let's have a quick edit here. I don't like the snowflakes on my letters. I love the technique. I don't like how these look. I think I needed something more delicate. I'm going to see if the last five minutes is too long for me to get these off with the water trick. These would have been the most dry, and that's being pretty stubborn. Okay, wipe off the white. When we're teaching our classes at our retail shop here in Gallup Police, Ohio, um, our teachers walk around with a little spray bottle of water for this exact reason, because if you can catch it when it's fresh paint, you can fix it without starting over. So now I'm going to lay my stencil back on top and get it nice and lined up. Tape in two places, and this is where having my dirty roller is going to come in so handy. I can pop this baby right on top of there. Roll up my bag so the paint doesn't dry. So 
So this is one of those reasons that you like and subscribe and share and tell people about these videos because we're not going to hide the things from you. We are not going to design it first and then show you how the perfect thing looks when it took us 15 kinds of ways to go. I want to show you like the process. So now to mask that, we just go right back over it with a little pressure. And we know we're just going to do a couple of coats. All right, guys, um, it's taken about four to five coats. Um, I did thin coats. Um, so that is the bottom two patched. And I want to say something about this mess right here. Um, I think that this is a very, very good lesson for you guys to know about. Um, when I very first started using stencils, I would store them in a pile on my credenza behind my painting um, desk. When I would do that, I would not remove the pieces of tape. I just picked up one stencil and I got five because all the tapes are still attached. So when you are putting your stencils around and you're doing things and they get into a jumbled mess like this because of tape, um, it's a really, it can cause problems. You can smear paint, it can do all kinds of things. So make sure you take your little bits of tape off and then have a good stencil organization system. We've got a curtain rod back here um, that is the curtain wire and we also do them in these books. I probably wouldn't be the one to put it away in the book while I was doing the project, but look how nice that stores. Um, that has been flopped around from hither to yon and it stays flat and perfect. Um, we'll put an affiliate link for that, but anyway, yeah, don't do this. All right, I have patched and repaired the snowflake damage. Um, thankfully, when you watch the video all the way through, you won't make the same mistake I did, but you will learn how to fix it if you make a mistake in the future. How do we finish this? Okay, this is super important. My porch has westerly weather that just comes right out my front door. Um, I'm on the top of a hill. Um, and so I wanna make sure that my board is sealed all the way around. You're going to want to, you don't have to necessarily varnish your board all the way around, but make sure it's sealed. Your ends on both ends, the back side, the front side. So when you're doing your prep step, go ahead and seal everything with a good matte sealer. And that will, um, you can also use a stain if you want to, and that will get everything sealed under. And then you won't have to worry about things getting permeated. Your paint is another thing. There's a little bit of sealer in paint. And a lot of times we don't talk about sealing because, um, we might be hanging things inside on a wall and there's enough sealer in the paint to do the job. Um, so, but if you're going to be on the tall porch sign, then you're going to want to do a sealing step. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to use a matte um, polyurethane. Okay. You use that, you apply it with a foam applicator. Um, and then once you are done, oh, we want to also matte finish our snowflake with the glitter on it. And that way the glitter doesn't just come off all over the place. Do it separately on a piece of like brown paper sack or something like that. Make sure you're using your respirator um, or you're in a very well ventilated place. Follow the directions on the back of the can. You only have one set of lungs. Um, so make sure you treat them right. This stuff is not to be messed with. Um, the mat, the Krylon Mat 1311 finish is one of my very favorite products um, to use. And then you're going to apply your snowflake with, um, this is a Gorilla Glue epoxy, and it has a double pump so that you don't have to have two jars and it's really messy. You just push this out on a piece of like uh, aluminum foil or the lid of like a yogurt container or something like that, that you can just chuck in the trash, push it out, use a popsicle stick, stir it up, and then you'll put it on the back of your sprayed snowflake. One thing I do like to do when I am um, attaching things that have been varnished, is I like to go right where I know I'm going to apply and I like to scratch into my varnish and just give it a little bit of rough and then apply the epoxy right there and then settle that right down on top. Um, that's a really good way to get like some tooth to it. Um, and that is our project. Thank you so much for joining us. See you in the next video.